on here. Just get some little bit of grease, kind of trace it a little bit, and it'll spread itself more. It'll start coming into this area a little bit too as well. It's just kind of ricochet. Okay, there we go. That should be good enough. Just kind of scrape off any excessive. Keep your hands uh, from everywhere else that you're going to be touching greasy. Also, want to make a note here that uh, it's going it's going to be facing this way. Uh, you're going to make sure that this points horizontally, so you can ensure that this arrow points pretty much to the variator shaft directly. And there's also going to be a little indent here. Here you can see a little bit of a little dot right there. Let's see if I can get focus. See that little dot right there. That little indication right there, it's pretty much going to be painting toward a little bit more tilted, kind of like inclined a little bit up like this way. It's not about 90 degrees, not the perfect 90 degrees, but it's going to be just a little bit above uh, this horizontal uh, markings um, for our Kickstarter gear here. I mean, Kickstarter, um, you know, gear set here. This is one of the set that's going to actually rotate the actual Kickstarter gear that... Um, it's unfortunate that unfortunately I actually put this cover on there. You can't see it, but if you remember on a previous video, I pretty much had everything taken out, and I was gonna show you pretty much uh, what it looked like before it's been uninstalled. So you can use that as a reference if you need to go back to see what it looks like, uh, pretty much without the variators and stuff. But we have to work with what we have now. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pretty much get it tucked in to that 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 first uh, loop there. This one there's gonna be a bushing on the second one. That's actually for the actual Kickstarter uh, stand itself uh, gear. So we're gonna put that one in after that, which barricades this in. And you wanna go ahead and also notice that there is a little pin right there. That little pin there, we don't wanna get knocked loose. So what we wanna make sure is we're gonna adjust it the way we think we're gonna have it, including this little uh, foot here. So we wanna make sure that it's pretty much staying flush back there for you so we want to make sure it's same plus so we're just gonna simulate what it looked like if it goes in correctly so there we go if it's gonna be that way it's gonna be offset a little bit because the case is not perfectly parallel to the ground but it's gonna be right there I also want to make sure you since you can rotate this shaft anywhere you want to kind of rotate it where the pin itself is coming above that way you don't have to worry about it falling loose because if you put it this way and you start moving the gear a little bit, it's easily going to fall. So we want to ha have it sitting above, just like that right there around that area. Okay. And that's it. We're going to have it. Where it's going to come in right there. So we're going to go and put it in now. See as I'm doing it. See, this might be just a better angle for you. See where I'm going to fit. I'm going to try to get my hands out of the way. What I'm going to do is tuck this in right here. Get the foot in first. Or perhaps maybe go in from the top like this first. And then just kind of squeeze the belt outward. There we go. There we go. Now I can fit right in. And just keeping again, or our goal is to make sure this lines up parallel. And by the way, it's going to be much easier. We're going to secure the gasket here. And I'll show you how to secure the gasket. We're just going to take it. Um, you remember the CVT bolts we're going to take? We're going to take, since we don't have the dowel pins to help us hold it, this is actually even better. We're going to take the bolts itself and actually secure the bolts. Uh, where the dowel pins would have been or actually better in the corners there that way it secures it fully the gasket from dripping down and uh, ruining itself so we're going to go put one here go ahead and let's let's uh, un, untangle the gasket here there we go we're going to put one right there that will hold that gasket side there up just kind of give it a fair screw in, maybe about a centimeter in. It doesn't have to be all the way because we're going to take it back out shortly because we're going to put our CVT cover. We're not going to put any Loctite, so we don't have to worry about it yet until we actually put our dowel pins. And then we'll put another one right here in this corner. Okay, we'll, get, we'll grab it from the other end. Uh, still make sure that you grab it from the appropriate ends. So this one's pretty much from that top end right there, from one end to another. There we go. There we go, we're going to go and put in this corner, and this will help us hold pretty much our gasket from falling uh, and getting damaged with all the gear mechanism. And that's it, we got that. Got a good twirl there. Okay, that should be it. 
goes in deep enough, not going anywhere. Okay, now we can focus on just getting our gear sets here. Okay, our next gear will be our pretty much our actual kickstart here. Here we go. I have the safety here. And we're also going to rob parts from this shortly. Uh, we're going to need this part. This is going to pretty much hold our kickstart uh, shaft spring here. Sorry that I called it a kickstart gear, but it's part of the kickstart gear set. So we're going to pretty much bring the kickstart uh, gear shaft with us. Okay, and then we're also going to need the bushing that was right here. So we'll just take it out. You probably use your pinky finger here. You could probably dig it. Your pinky finger, there it goes, coming out. Okay, so that's pretty much all the parts I believe that we need. Unfortunately, we couldn't get that dowel pin we wanted, but we'll have to deal with some new dowel pins later on. Okay, let me go and turn it in an angle where you got light as well. That way you can see it with the light. Be much more visible. Make sure you got a good angle on it. Okay, so now we can go ahead. We're going to apply some of our um, uh, grease here again, Molly Graphite grease. We're just going to go and put it thoroughly in there. It can go on both sides, really. This one can go on top as well as the inside as well. And the inside part is going to be hard to get in, but you can just use this tip part. You can apply it on the tip here. It'll just work the same, kind of work at it. Give it a good twist there. There we go, got some grease in there as well. It's gonna get messy a little bit. This prevents it from wearing out. Looks like it almost goes only one way, but it actually goes either way. All right, so very good. There we go. Got enough grease in there, Ray. We can actually use this grease for the the other ones too as well. Okay, so we got some grease in there already. Pretty good amount of grease. We'll put that in there. Again, our number is still good. You can see here our number is straight parallel, and that's what we want. And now this one here, I'm gonna wipe my fingers out here. This one here, you can put the springs in last. We don't have to worry about that yet. But you want to make sure that this indent mark right here. It's also facing horizontal, uh, pretty much toward your variator shaft. So you want this to pretty much face the number on this one right here. So you can see it right here. Even if you see there's a blocked barricade, where there's not a lot of groove here at all, or teeth. But you're going to try to get as much as you can going horizontal, even if you have to tilt it down more or up more. But you definitely want this facing as much as you can to the variator. Uh, just directly across from that other uh, marking, okay? So here we go, we're going to put it in. And it already has some grease now there. And what this does, as you can see here, it's going to uh, pretty much align with this teeth area. See that right there? Once we get into the right groove, of course. There we go, we'll have to wiggle it a little bit. Again, it's not going to be perfectly horizontal, but you can want it pretty much facing horizontal as possible into the indent there we go see that right there I had to go a little bit further down but it's still there and that's what you want it's almost pointing to the circle indent mark which is fine and it's good that we secure our CVT gasket that way it won't interfere okay and now we can feel where that little notch is for our spring this little notch here that hooks onto the spring here we're gonna go and put that one back down it's gonna be a little tricky here I believe it's going from here there we go there we go, there we go. Now it's gonna put some pressure now. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our pair of plier and swing that other side of the spring right back into this one. And then we're gonna, of course, secure it here, uh, eight millimeter um, socket. We're gonna bring that eight millimeter socket right away. That way we're prepared to go ahead and secure it. And go and get that eight millimeter socket. That way this thing will be ready to be going in there securely. Um, it's good to have an extension and that way your hands are getting out of the way 
All right, but then this case here, I'll get a smaller extension, that way it doesn't interfere with the camera angle. Okay, so here we go. We can't really tie this down yet until we can get that spring retracted uh, to his to his home setting. So here we go. You just gotta be really careful because you got gasket as well as in there, and also for safety reason. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to this right here. That way it doesn't force this to move in the way. Okay. It's just be really careful. Make sure you grip it really well. There we go, almost, oh, there, see? That's what, we wanna make sure it does spring. So you gotta be really, really careful. Okay, we're gonna go and insert again, give it another attempt. Okay, I'm gonna try, see if I can get a better leverage angle here. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna move this onto that loop there. And it's already hooked, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. I'm just going to balance this, get my fingers out of the way. There we go. Got it in there. Now it's very, has some tension. You can see this uh, shaft is being curved. So we want to go and work quickly and get the secure plate on there. Again, you don't want to just put your hand barely in there. If you can possible, try to get this to go in there on its own. Uh, so if it hits this one, it's not going to hit your finger, right? And... Oh, almost. Almost there. Very hard to see. There we go. Alright, it's screwing in. And once it's screwing in, it's going to follow its groove back. And there it is, right there. Now this one right here, you can't put some uh, a blue Loctite. This is very important, the reason why, if it actually falls loose and gets into the mechanism, you're also gonna have some uh, damage. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put some blue Loctite on it. I should have done it before I put it in there, but that's okay, now you can see where it's supposed to go. And we can take it back off like this. Once we get a feel for everything, it's pretty much easier than we first trying to do it from an angle that we haven't done before. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put some blue Loctite. There we go. Oh. The Loctite itself kind of secures its own thread, even though it's plastic, luckily. If it was metal, we probably wouldn't be able to take it off other than almost ripping the plastic off. All right, and we'll put some on the cap. There we go. And we're just gonna take this for a dip. There we go. Should be enough right there. See, all I just want is a little bit. Just to cause the vibration, the cement part to not give into vibration much. Okay, I'm gonna put the cap back on there, our blue Loctite. That way it doesn't just uh, drip out. Okay, here we go again. Again, this faces a certain angle, so we already know it's gonna be like this way. So we're gonna go ahead and insert our blue Loctite back in here. And then we're gonna feed this carefully back into its position. Once we feel the groove there. There we go. it's going in the brood now or is it <laughs> okay don't want to poke my finger in there just in case that it's like a mouse trap you know there we go should be right there that's where you want oh it's not even going in the groove there we go now that's the groove right there See it right there, fall into position. So we want, I'll go and get the longer extension now that we can see as I'm tightening it. And then we're going to torque it to about five foot pounds, and that's when we can go back and use our smaller uh, torque here. Everything that we have blue Loctite on, we want to make sure we can go and torque it down 
even though our, our Loctite will do most of the trick for us. All right, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Five foot pounds. Be careful with this, it's still aluminum. So, there we go, click. Just wanna make sure, that's it. All right, so we got that secure now, you can see there. And that is pretty much our mechanism. And it still says right there in the center. And the dots are right there, it's pointing directly for the dots. So this is how you want it. So, and we got our bushings in there as well. Now you can see here from the top angle, you can see it's kind of a little bit uh, tilted toward this direction, which is fine. We're gonna straighten up because when the case gets on it, uh, that'll be our next one right now. We're gonna put the case on it, it'll straighten it up for us. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and repair it. We're gonna close up our Molly Graphite. We won't need that for a little bit. And now it's time to close the cover. Again, we're not gonna put, put any blue Loctite on it because this is something that we need to open and close back especially now that we haven't got the dowel pins on the other two corners yet so we're going to put all the screws and we're going to go and put our cover we're going to go and put one more molly grease it's pretty much on this side of the case and now this it's ready to be closed up there we go this is a plate here and we also put a little piece of um it's a special piece of uh, mash filter so it doesn't burn because this will get pretty hot so you just don't want to use any kind of a you know arts and craft you know cushion uh, filter you definitely want to go to the auto parts store and see if you can get one of those lawnmower filters you can cut them into specs we also put some in here as well that will keep the debris out but also let the air flow so and we also put a screw in there just to hold it tight we kind of modified it just a little slightly so that filters in there as well and you remember that bushing that we had earlier that was going in here. We need to go and put some uh, molly grease on that. So, gotta get that bushing out here. And what that bushing does, it, it pretty much uh, rides to protect when it's being kicked on, right here by this shaft. It sort of protects uh, the shaft itself from digging into the aluminum. So it's gonna spin mainly just this part. So we're gonna go ahead and put some molly grease Pretty much on both ends where the shaft is but also on top so let's go and get our molly graphite grease we're just going to again use what's ever in the top again you don't going to use a lot so make sure my hands not any debris kind of wipe it out okay we're going to put right here on the shaft itself and when it spins it'll make it thorough okay we're also going to put some here on the outside And you can actually pre-spin this onto the casing itself. Okay. And then you can use this right here to coat this one right here. Kind of twist it in there. As you can see, it looks like it's building up grease. Because we don't want grease to go further than that. We want the grease to stay where the grease is supposed to stay and do its job. But we don't want it, grease to get anywhere in the dry area. Especially the belt. So we're gonna make sure we spread it thinly back out from there. Okay, and then we're gonna put, we're gonna rotate the sides here so it gets enough grease everywhere. Okay, that should be good. Okay, we'll bring some grease back out this way. You can see here, grease is already building up in this corner. And the grease was here. Okay, that should be enough grease there. Molly graphite grease here. That prevents any kind of friction damage on the metal. Okay, now we're ready to go and put it back in our case. Again, we're gonna remove the case back once we get our dowel pins, as well as just, you know, making sure our, you know, once it spins, you're gonna build some debris and everything. We're gonna get that cleaned out. So, here we go. The exhaust side of the case pretty much faces us. And the engine in the rear, it pretty much right here, you can see how it loops. This is where the air flows back out, kind of channels out, and it flows out that way, so. Let me see if I can go ahead and uh, get this at a camera angle you can see better. I'm going to try to put it downward here. You can see me go from the top view, I guess, as much as I can here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go and tilt this a little bit. 
this way. If I do it this way, it's gonna be so high for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and tilt it back down. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort this in. But before I even do that, what I'm gonna show you is how I'm gonna take this right here and I'm gonna actually drop it into here. I wanna drop it in here because I wanna get this all properly greased. You know, when I was sitting there, just give it a twirl, pull it back in and out. You know, there we go, that should be greased enough. Okay, you don't need a lot. We're not trying to have it ricochet all over everywhere because it'll be a, an extra cleanup work. Okay, so there it goes, it's properly greased in there now. Uh, the, some people find it easier just to put this in here and then work their way for this one. So we can do it that way too, we can just leave this in here. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, pretty much align it. Now, this one right here will go here. We'll go right here and this one goes right there so we're gonna put some grease here as well uh, prevent it see how it's so it's very near the fan the barrier fan so you want to be really careful because you want to start getting grease here and then it start ricocheting into the belt so we're just gonna put some grease on the inside only and have it just kind of spin in there it will probably spin in some more we'll finish off the rest in this one right here Okay, it's good to put in the front end because once it reaches it, it's going to extend it all the way to the back end anyway. Okay. There we go. And you want to wipe any excessive grease on the top. You don't want the grease to, um, like I said again, ricochet out. You just want to keep the grease where the grease should be. All right, now it's in there great. And then we're not greasing this part. Uh, this actually holds pretty much where the variator sits here. So... Uh, we actually can, but it wouldn't be recommended. Again, we don't want to build any more debris and grease here in this area. So, there we go. Actually, you know, it might be a good idea to grease it because it seems like any kind of metal can use a little bit of grease to make sure it doesn't wear itself. So we'll go ahead and put a little grease just on the inside again. Keep in mind though, anything, it's very loose though. It's gonna just pretty much have this go in. It's not really gonna actually do any friction here. So grease probably wouldn't be really necessary. But since we got it in there already, we might as well just keep it in there just in case it, it builds up some kind of depreciation. All right, so now we're getting ready to go and put the case back on. Okay, let's get our screwdrivers out of the way. Everything there looks clean. We'll give it a, uh, a final blow. <laughs> And also we'll take out our supporting screw here uh, or for our gasket. So now we gotta be really careful of putting it together because there's no other um, dowel pins helping us hold down the gasket. So we wanna make sure that we align the gasket once we put in this. Okay, we're gonna go put it back in this proper slot. This is pretty much the farthest to our right. And this is our front left. Put it back in there that way we know exactly the pattern where we got it from you can see the variator pass up pretty much a big huge open space there for it that way for heat to dissipate and push itself out through here and it's like a maze and it just goes out the other way why the belt is covering this side i believe is the fact that it doesn't want to have pretty much uh, belt will start wearing out and they'll start leaving their kind of a black residue from its uh, counterparts. And I guess that's why, I guess this uh, gasket is on the back side of it to protect the belt residue from building up here as well as, you know, dust once two halves of the aluminum is actually joined together. So we're gonna go and join those two together right now. You can see me put them together. There we go, I'm gonna try to hold this down with my, me hit a camera angle. Now we can see here it goes coming up. I'm gonna give it a lift. Okay, just keep an eye out where we're gonna turn this out. There you go. See, we got that. You want to meet that little. You want to meet that little center part first before you work everything else in. And it should come in. And if it doesn't come all the way in yet, don't be alarmed. Don't force it. Uh, what it is is the gear itself is blocking it. So what you want to do is uh, pretty much get the kickstart. 
and our kickstart should be somewhere. We want to go and get the kickstart in there. We want to go and have it screwed in there. There we go. Our kickstart pretty much helps us move this case a little bit. And what a lot of people do is they take a mallet hammer and so forth, but that's very not necessary. If you don't have any gunk uh, holding it down, a uh, mallet hammer is not going to knock any other gunk loose. Uh, so what you want to do is just go ahead and attach your uh, kickstart now. You don't have to screw it in permanently yet, but you want to just attach it so, and then give it, a, uh, give it a good shake. Let's see if I can knock it from this angle so you can see how it will close. Okay, here we go. So you want to give it a good shake. There we go. See, give it some more shake. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm putting pressure. There we go. Almost there. And our gasket is in place, which is good. There we go. So turn it now like this. See, one slide's already flush. The other one hasn't yet. Okay, let me go and get the camera down. I can work with both hands here. Okay, just use your Kickstarter. There's no dowel pins really blocking it. Just want to make sure. There we go. You want to support your um, gasket here. Since there's no dowel pins yet in there. Almost there. Smooth your gear a little bit. Let it free in there. Should very much click close securely. Give it a gear there. All our bolts out already. Just gotta work on making sure that let's get everything getting closed. All right, let's see. One side to another side is opening. Again, this what this kickstart does is helps you move this gear right here that was that you can't see.